welcome back to Nature Matters Academy with Dr. Jenny. This week we are talking about taxonomy. And taxonomy is really just a fancy word for organization. So say you love to organize your jewelry or your toys or your, um, maybe you have a rock collection, you like to organize that, right? That is considered taxonomy. It's just some sort of systematic way of organizing things so that they make sense. And in biology, Taxonomy basically is a way for us to organize plants and animals in a way that um, makes sense to all people around the world. So before we had this set system, people were organizing things in different ways. People were call calling the same plant different names. They were calling the same animal different names. It was really, really confusing. And so as scientists, um, we, we work as a community, as a global community, to be able to make sure that when we're talking about an organism, we're all talking about the same thing. And that's what taxonomy does. So taxonomy gives us a system with different levels on how we organize things. That's through the domain, kingdom, phylum, etc. And then we also have a very structured way on how we name organisms. And it's called binomial nomenclature. And basically it means just the two names. So many of you may have heard that we call organisms by a genus and a species name. And that's not necessarily um, what we're gonna get into today. Really, I just want you to understand that there is a system for organizing plants and animals in the natural world, and there is a system for naming them. And the reason we have this system is so that when we're communicating with each other, we're all on the same page. We all know exactly what organism we're talking about. So I want to give you guys a brief history on taxonomy in biology. It all started with Aristotle. And Aristotle started organizing basically the natural world by having humans as kind of the top tier or the top level because we were the most advanced of the organisms on the planet. And then he divided them up into plants and animals. And in his animal group, he divided them up. This is really interesting. Are you ready for this? He divided them up by animals that could bleed and those that could not bleed. So think about that for a second. Um, what animal bleeds red? All right, did you say something like maybe your brother or your cat or dog, a bird, a lizard? All of those bleed red, and that was one of his categories for an animal. The other one was um, animals that essentially don't bleed or have white blood, not red blood. Can you guys think of an animal that doesn't have red blood? All right, that's right. Think of insects, grasshoppers, um, mantises, all those don't bleed red blood. And he classified them in that way. Really, if you go back to our classification system today, we call those vertebrates and invertebrates. So anyway, he had his own system of classifying and this, this worked for a while and people used this, but they still had a really difficult time with naming organisms and all using the same characteristics to classify organisms. So it wasn't until a man named Carl Linnaeus, he was a Swedish botanist in the 18th century, and he took on the really, really big task of creating a system that people could use worldwide, first of all, for classifying organisms, and then second of all, for naming them. Because back then, the names for organisms were like seven, 10, 12 words long, and they were really descriptive words. And what he did is he took that system and he narrowed down every species to a single name. And the single name consisted of two words. It was their genus and their species. And that's what we call our binomial nomenclature today. And a fun fact about Carl Linnaeus is he was a very prideful and arrogant man. And he is famous for saying, God creates, Linnaeus organizes, or Linnaeus classifies. So basically he thought that it was his job on earth to um, classify all the living things, which turns out it's what he did. So um, maybe it wasn't as much pride as truth, I don't know. But um, so today, when we get down to the species level, this is something that um, I wanna make sure everyone knows is kind of um, the old way that we used to think of species were if two organisms could interbreed and create an offspring that could also breed. And I know that gets complicated, um, but I just wanna let you know that today, um, species are differentiated by molecular biology and essentially by DNA. We take DNA from various animals, plants, whatever, and we compare it 
to other animals or plants that are closely related and we see how different they are genetically. And based on how different they are genetically, that's how we classify different species.